Welcome back. Welcome to this second recorded lecture. Thank you to those who provided feedback on the previous lecture. I uh, would appreciate if you could send any sort of feedback to enhance your learning experience as we move to this online modality. All right. So today we'll be using the Sequila database. Go ahead and open up Table Plus, then connect directly to the Sequila database. It may be easier for you in the future to create separate connections in Table Plus. Okay. Once you're connected, you'll see the tables on the left. And then go ahead and open up the SQL editor. Please make sure you submit your completed lecture exercises to Brightspace. There should be an entry for each lecture under the Assignments tab. Today we'll be covering conditional statements with case. This will allow us to do if-else scenarios within a SQL statement. And then we'll talk about how we can work with dates, because much of the data we'll be working with involves dates. You may be wondering about what happened to the subqueries. We'll be saving that for a synchronous meeting session. It seems like we would probably need that interaction in order to work through it because it can become complex and confusing. Okay, go ahead and create a new file to save your, your work. Call it lecture exercises underscore case dot SQL. And you can do that in Table Plus using the Save SQL As function. All right, so what does case do? Case is a SQL function that you will see across many different database flavors. It allows you to create these conditional queries. And what it looks like is if you're from your programming classes, you'll have these conditional control structures where you say, if this, then do that. This one is for JavaScript. If a certain condition is met, run the next line of code. If not, check for another condition. And if none of those conditions are met, this is where the code under the else block is executed. Case is helpful when you want to translate numeric values or cryptic text into something more meaningful, especially if you're trying to create a report. It may be difficult to translate, OK, if 1 equals active or 0 equals inactive, it may be easier to simply write that text out of saying active or inactive. Other examples are if you want to clarify gender, in the database it may be stored as M for male and an F for female. With case, you can run a SQL query and have it spell out male instead of just M. Same thing for Fahrenheit or any sort of abbreviations. Or you can create these categories for your data sets. We can say if we're running an aggregate query and we find the, a certain customer has zero orders, we can label them in the SQL result as a potential customer. If they have only one order, label them as a new customer. If they have more than five orders, case can label them as a loyal customer. But if none of those conditions are met, we could just say, this is an average customer. This would fall under that else statement. Here's the basic syntax for a case statement. Start it off with case, and then for each different situation, you start the line with a when, and then you specify what is the condition you're looking for. Then then is a reserve keyword, Following that, you would spell out what the result should be. It could be writing out a certain label or a certain number. The else 
is optional at the very bottom. Also, the alias is optional. But I recommend using an alias because adding this chunk of code can make your SQL statement look messy and hard to read. If none of the conditions are met that are specified for each when statement, then the else query or the else, the code under the else is returned. Okay. So whatever value we put after the else, that's what we'll return if none of the conditions are met. Else is all optional, but if you don't include an else and none of the conditions are true, the case statement will return a null value. Okay. So it's something to keep in mind how you want the final report to be because the end user may not know how to properly interpret null. It's usually better practice to include the else statement. For our first example, we're going to do a simple translation of the active column. In our previous quiz, some of you were unsure if one equals zero, or I'm sorry, if one equals active or if zero equals inactive. Okay, so a business analyst may have that same confusion. If we were to generate a report, instead of saying one or zero under the active column, we're going to write out a text expression. Okay. We're going to select for all the customers and include the customer ID, first name, last name, and email for all customers. But in addition to all those columns, we're going to have this text expression that's going to say, are they active or inactive? We're actually going to spell out those words, active or inactive. Here's the syntax for the case statement. Go ahead and try fulfilling this query. You can add two different conditions, but for this example, I would recommend only creating one when condition and then using the else statement because there are only two different scenarios here, active or inactive. So go ahead and try that out on your own. All right, for each example, make sure you copy the task description to paste in as a comment into your SQL file to submit. I'll grab all this. So we just need to get the customer ID, first name, last name, and email. Because we're dealing with the active column, it's probably a good idea to also include the active column into your list of columns to select. For the case statement, I highly suggest creating a new line for it. And when you do, make sure you add the comma after the previous column. So case, and then on another separate line, create an entry for each condition. We're only going to list out one condition here. So it's saying when the active column equals one, then return a string says active and for everything else if active let's say is zero three four or anything else outside of one we'll call it inactive make sure to close the case statement with an end and we'll add that optional alias to make it easier to interpret what is the expression we're trying to return in the select statement. 
we'll call it customer underscore status. And we're going to use all lowercase and separate the words with underscore because that's the format used in the Sequila database. We want to be consistent. We're selecting from the customer table. All right, so we can cross-reference if the case statement worked correctly. Sandra Martin, she has active equals zero, and then the customer status is showing as inactive. Our second example, we're going to categorize, categorize the different films based on how long you can rent the film for. If we can rent the film for less than four days, we'll create an expression that says short. If we can return, rent the film for four to six days, we'll return a medium text label. And if greater than six days, we'll say long. We want to select the film title, the rental duration, so we can double check our work and then create that label with the case statement. So there should be three different columns in your final result. Here's the syntax again and see if you can write this query using these duration labels. In our previous example, we only use the equal comparison operator but you can use any of the comparison operators, less than, greater than, and also you can use between. I'm going to grab the task description and the criteria for the duration labels. I'm going to create a multi-line comment here. We're going to select title, rental, duration. You can copy and paste those columns. Make sure to end each column with a comma if it's in between the list. And create a new line for the case statement. We're evaluating against the rental duration column. So when rental duration is less than four, then short. When rental duration between four and six, then medium. When rental duration is greater than six, then long. Okay. Now we'll end this case statement, alias it, call it duration. Don't forget to say where we're selecting the rows from, from film table. Just double check our work. We can sort by rental duration by clicking on the column header. It looks correct. Okay, seven is greater than six, so it's long. And then five should be medium and that looks okay so I'll scroll all the way to the bottom and then three for short. Our third example we're going to create a label based on how many times a film was rented. This would be helpful for a business analyst to quickly analyze what is the popularity of a film. They can see based on a bucket if it's a film's been rented within a certain range, what is its prop popularity? If it's been less rented for less than 10 times, we'll consider it poor. Between 10 and 19 rentals is average. If the film has been rented 20 to 30 times, it's good. And anything greater than 30 
is going to be assigned an excellent label. This query involves an aggregate and a group by, as well as a triple table join. So my recommendation is to first create that group by statement with the multiple joins, make sure that's working, and then finally add the case statement to create this, this rental ranking text label. Copy the task description into your SQL file. We're going to use three tables to figure out how many times a film was rented, but also to be able to return that film's title. So what are the tables that we need? We'll need the rental table, the film table to get the title, But we'll also need a third table, because if we look into the rental table, we don't have the film ID in there. It does have an inventory ID column. The third table that we're going to join into then is the inventory table, which has the film ID. We have the film table inventory and rental. The film table is joining into the inventory table based on film ID. Inventory is being joined on inventory ID into the rental table. Work out that SQL statement to do the group by and the count of how many times a film was rented. Do that before adding the case statement. Now would be a good time to pause and write that group by SQL statement. We're selecting the film title. the number of times a film was rented, going to alias the count as rental count we're selecting from the film table first joining the film table into the inventory table by connecting the film dot film ID column to inventory dot film ID column. Finally, connecting the inventory table to the rental table by linking together the inventory ID columns from both tables. We're grouping by the film ID. We could do the title, but there's a chance that there are two films with the same title. To make it easier to troubleshoot, let's add film.filmid to the list of columns to select. The results show Academy Dinosaur has been rented 23 times. Let's see, Alley Forever nine times and then alien center 22 times so this confirms that we can successfully grab the number of rentals 
before adding too much complexity that may make the SQL hard to troubleshoot if there's an error. Okay, we, that's why we did not add the case statement yet. Go ahead and add the case statement to identify each type of rental count. So if it's less than 10 times, you should get a text label as poor and then so on. So now is a good time to pause and try out adding the case statement on your own. Right, we're going to add the case statement now. I'll add a comma after the rental count alias, create a new line for the case statement. We have four different conditions, but we'll only specify three of them and then use the catch-all for the excellent label. When count is less than 10, then poor. When count is between 10 and 19, then average. When count between 20 and 30, then good. And because we've accounted for everything less than 30, we could say anything else is going to be excellent because everything else is going to be greater than 30. We could have said when count is greater than 30, excellent, but here we'll save ourselves a few keystrokes and say else, excellent. And the case statement, then alias it, we'll call it rental ranking. Go ahead and run it. Let's spot check it. All right. Ace Goldfinger only has been rented seven times, so it receives a poor ranking. Anything excellent, we can let's just sort it here. Actually, it might be easier if I sort by rental count. Back to the top. Okay, so there are a few films that have been rented more than 30 times for the excellent ranking. Creating these bins is not only useful for the business analyst, but also for the machine learning engineer. If you're working on a classification supervised learning problem, you can try to predict this rental ranking. This, by creating the SQL result, you label the data set. And instead of trying to predict a specific number, which may not be as easy, you can try to predict a fewer number of possible outcomes. So here we can try to say, based on certain attributes of rental activity, the customer's characteristics, we can try to fig figure out, okay, is this particular film going to be rented and have an excellent ranking, a good ranking, or a poor ranking. So think about that if um, you're trying to come up with a machine learning problem to work on, you can categorize or bin the data in this way for a classification problem, machine learning problem. For our last example, we're going to list out all of the film titles and then indicate if the film was ever rented in June 2005. To do this, we're going to use a subquery. All of our previous examples we're using some sort of comparison operator, equal sign, between, greater than, less than. But here we're going to evaluate against a list of values. So to do that, we're accustomed to using the in operator. We're going to check film IDs and see if it's inside a list of film IDs that were rented in June 2005. It's a similar query to the one we just did where we have to do a triple join to figure out which films were rented. 
So you can copy and paste that query. The only difference is adding a where condition for when the film was rented. Following the same practice as before, we're going to add layers of complexity one step at a time. We'll build the subquery first, confirm that it works, and that subquery again is that triple join to figure out films rented in 2005. Once we confirm the film query is working, we'll add it into the case statement. Let's copy and paste the task description. We'll build the subquery first to figure out films rented in 2005. We can copy and paste part of the previous query because this will satisfy all of the join conditions that we need. We'll only need to add a where condition. We'll be comparing against film ID. We'll create a list of film IDs that the case statement is going to check against with the in operator. Select film ID or film.film ID. Let me copy and paste the rest of the query. This will get all the films ever rented, but we want to narrow it down to films rented in June 2005. For column types that are date time or timestamp, make sure to include the time for the last or the end part of your date range. Otherwise, it will only get midnight. We have to add the 23-59-59. Confirm that this query works. Okay, so these are all the film IDs rented in June. 2005. Now that we have our subquery finished, we could start building out the rest of the query. I'm going to create an outer query, select title, and here's where the case statement goes. We only have one condition. We're just checking to see if the film ID for a particular title exists in the results for this subquery. We're using the in operator here because in checks against a list of values. Because we're using a subquery, we have to enclose it in quote in parentheses. I'll take out this semicolon at the end of the subquery. I'm going to indent all of this subquery at once. For any film IDs that match the subquery's result set, we'll create a text label saying rented. For everything else that does not match for all the other film IDs, we'll say not rented using the else. Make sure to end the case statement and also alias it. We'll call this case statement expression rented status. We're selecting the title from the film table. So there should be two columns, the title and the rented status. Now it's a little difficult here to to spot check if this is correct. 
we can add the film ID to the select statement. And we'll use that film ID to cross reference if the film was indeed rented in June 2005. Okay, so we'll look at Agent Truman. I'm going to spot check Agent Truman. So select star. Okay, I'll do select rental date to minimize the number of columns that come back. We'll copy and paste this subquery and add an additional where condition which would be for the Agent Truman film ID. And film dot film ID equals six. You'll see all the rental dates. All right, all, it just so happens that all the rentals for Agent Truman were in June 2005. Always good to spot check. Make sure that's part of your practice when developing SQL queries, especially as they increase in levels of complexity. That concludes conditional statements with case. Make sure to save your file. From the Run Current button, click Save, SQL As, and just select the file name that you want to save it as. So lecture exercises underscore case dot SQL.